Howdy, friends. Steve DePoe here with the Rose Realty Team with this week's Real Estate Vlog for North Texas. Today, the truth about millennial home buyers. I, in doing this research, I found it was was rather interesting, and I hope you I hope I hope you share those feelings. So, number one, millennials are actually the, you might want to call it the misunderstood generation. Okay, uh, we think of millennials as this kind of like fun-loving, hijinks kind of group. Uh, when in fact they were actually born between um, uh, 1981 and 1995. And so that puts them today around the uh, 26 to 40 year old range. So they're not these, you know, party animals, let's go to a rave kind of group that we kind of, we're like, we, like we think they are. They're actually in prime age and prime, prime target age, if you will, um, to, to, buy a, to buy a home. But the problem is they're not. And how come? Well, let's get into that. So number one, um, Freddie Mac, uh, we've, all, we've all heard of Freddie Mac. Um, Freddie Mac estimates that 50% of the uh, home ownership gap um, in this generation is caused by high, high housing costs. Now, some of those high housing, housing costs we're going to touch on in, in some coming weeks when we're talking about aging in place, uh, but also that high housing um, cost is due to slow um, slow construction of new housing, which came about because of a lot of the restrictions on um, forestation and those kinds of things that, frankly, the millennials kind of helped push through. OK, so it's kind of be careful what you ask for it may come and bite you in, 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 the, in, the, in the backside. OK, um, adjusted for inflation. Right. There's been a um, there's been a 29 percent. Um, increase in the cost of housing um, since uh, since 2000, but in actually real income, real income has only gone up about one percent, right? So big, huge gap there. Um, again, that's according to Freddie Mac. So when you kind of run the numbers and you kind of think about it, no wonder you know the the, the millennials aren't actually diving head first into the to the um, to the uh, the housing market. We'll also get into to a couple things in, in a second. Now let's talk about purchasing power, okay? And this obviously goes for the, for the rest of us as well, but millennials are what we're focusing in right now. So, so in 2000, the median household income was around 42,000, <coughs> excuse me. And the median price of a home was around 119, 120,000. So that's about a 2.9%, the house, that's about 2.9 uh, times um, what the median household income was. So when you start doing stuff like, um, uh, uh, debt to income ratios. Um, this is right in the prime area that kind of like around less than three, less than three times is uh, the prime area. And back in 2000, it was, it was sweet. Okay. You are at 2.8, you're good. Today in 2021, however, the medium house, the medium household uh, income is around um, 70, uh, 79, uh, 79,900 or around 80,000. So that's about double what it was in 2000. And then the median price of um, housing, um, uh, of housing is around um, uh, 408, 409 thousand dollars. Run that math there, okay? Um, the housing market or the median price of housing has gone up around three and a half times. Where what I what I just said, the the medium um, household income has only gone up around twice, okay? Now, again, just go back to uh, 2021. So when you do run those numbers between the medium household income and the medium cost of housing, that's about a 5.1% multiplier, okay? Um, so that's outside that range of what we, uh, that comfort zone, if you will, um, when, you, when it comes down to debt to income ratios and those kinds of things. Interesting. Okay, so let's talk, let's talk about what's stopping then millennials from diving headfirst into the, um, into the uh, housing market. Um, number one, student debt. Okay, we've heard we've heard student debt all over the place. Okay, um, I'm you know you know I'm not I'm, I'm not a scholar here, but I'm not exactly sure why student debt just skyrocketed. Yes, I I kind of get it where some people made um, let's say in an ill-informed decisions and and did uh, degrees that they are not able to actually pay back their student loans. You know, because they're working outside their degree or they're working in a, in a field where they don't need a degree. Um, but I'm not sure why, you know, the colleges 
um, just increase their debt, like you know, increase their increase their tuition and those kinds of things, like mul you know multiple uh, factors there uh, compared to when, for example, I went to college, right? Uh, they're starting families later in life, okay? So I think they're do settling on their degrees, they're paying back some of their debt, and then they're starting their families. Whether we're talking about families in terms of getting married or having um, having the kiddos, they're doing that later in life. And then again, then there's an oversaturated workforce, which is causing sort of a stagnation, if you will, in terms of um, in terms of salaries. Fascinating stuff. I hope you know you kind of learned a little bit something there, um, and, uh, as as I did. Uh, next week we're going to talk about um, rent prices and how they're skyrocketing uh, throughout the United States, and there's reasons for this. This is Steve DePaul with the Rose Realty Team. I'm going to bounce. <laughs>